what is zero etl so this is all conceptually sounds good does it really work hello everyone in this video i'm going to cover what is etl challenges in etl data pipeline see if zero etl is going to address the challenges then i'll show zero etl integration between amazon aurora postgres and redshift finally i'm going to explain uh, limitations with zero etl okay what is etl it is a process that combines data from multiple sources to a data warehouse or other unified data repository etl stands for extract transform and load these are various stages or steps in the etl data pipeline here is what each stage means extract it is a stage where we take data from different sources like databases spreadsheets or apis so here data can be in different formats uh, they it can come in a structured format if uh, the source is a relational database it may come in a semi structured format if the source is non relational databases like mongodb or maybe sometimes when we get that from apis or it could be in unstructured format if data source is stream of logs so then what is the next uh, stage transform in this stage data is cleaned summarized and change the data format or structure so it is a way you need it for the end usage so this is about transform stage then load put the transform data into new place where it is easy to access and use like a data warehouse so these are the three stages in etl standard data pipeline etl is important because it helps gather and organize data so business users can understand it better and make good decisions we can better understand these concepts when we draw parallel with public water supply water supply authority gathers water from various sources like rivers lakes and underground wells it is like data extraction stage treat the water to make it clean and safe this is similar to data transform stage and then deliver the clean water into people's homes it is equivalent to data load stage challenges with etl data pipeline now let's go through the list of common challenges with the conventional etl data pipeline tough to manage etl pipeline etl process often involve complex transformation logic that can be difficult to manage especially as business requirement evolve scheduling nightmare managing dependencies and scheduling across multiple etl jobs to ensure data is processed in the correct order without creating bottlenecks is very cumbersome complex change management any changes in the source system data formats can break the etl pipeline requires constant vigilance and quick adoption which is not easy to achieve so it is less flexible to dynamic business needs broken pipeline identifying where and why the etl process failed can be very difficult so recovery can be slow from failure especially in complex pipelines shortcomings in performance and scalability as the data volume grows etl process can be choked and overall process becomes slower or may even fail leading to delays in data availability for analytics high cost etl process can be resource intensive and managing the cost of the needed compute and storage resources can be tricky so how can we overcome these challenges etl data pipeline seems to be the problem here can we eliminate the etl pipeline altogether let's see what is zero etl zero etl is a set of integrations that eliminates or minimizes the need to build etl data pipelines the idea is to reduce the complexity time and cost associated with the traditional etl process which can often be bottleneck data projects here is what zero etl generally aims to address or achieve near real time data access instead of extracting data at a scheduled intervals zero etl aims for more real time approach this means data is made available for analysis almost as soon as it is created or received reduced data movement traditional etl process involve moving data from one place to another which can be time consuming and resource intensive zero etl tries to minimize this by allowing data to be queried and analyzed in its original location or target location simplify transformation instead of transforming all data in bulk before it can be used 
Zero ETL strategies often involve transforming data on the fly as it's needed. This can involve using more sophisticated query engine and data virtualization techniques. Agility and flexibility. By reducing reliance on complex scheduled ETL jobs, organizations can be more agile in their data practices, quickly adopting to new data sources and analysis needs. Let's relate it with the earlier example, public water supply. On the fly treatment, simplified purification. Rather than having one big treatment plant, imagine if each home had a small super efficient purifier that cleans water right as it enters the home. This means the water is fresh and you don't have to treat lots of water all at once. Right? So this all conceptually sounds good. Does it really work? Let's try it. I'll walk you through the zero ET integration between Amazon Aurora PostgreSQL as a source extract and Amazon Redshift as a target environment. We'll segregate this zero ETL integration setup into three parts. First, we'll do the Aurora PostgreSQL setup. Second, Amazon Redshift. Third, zero ETL integration between Aurora PostgreSQL and Redshift. Okay, let's first start with setting up Aurora PostgreSQL. There is one limitation that we need to keep in mind. At this point of time, Aurora PostgreSQL supports zero ETL integration only in preview environment in OHIO region. Okay. So uh, here first we need to create a parameter group. Create parameter group Aurora PostgreSQL 15 DB class. So there are four parameters that we need to update to support zero ETL integration. So one, RDS logical replication, it should be one. Then Aurora enhanced logical replication should be set to one. Backup should be set to zero. Global DB should be set to zero. These are the four parameters that we need to update in the created parameter group. So now from using this parameter group, we can create new database create database we'll use a standard create amazon aurora as engine type postgres sql compatible edition provision this is this is another limitation it works only with 15.4 so we'll go with the dev test template i can call it loan servicing we we'll leave the master username as is we'll set the password We'll choose something less computing power so it will not cost us do not create any aurora replica yes leave it like that do not connect to an ec2 compute resource leave it like that a default vpc group that is fine we'll make it public access i mean this is the demo environment we are making it public otherwise we generally keep it private so we leave everything uh, default as is we'll disable enable enhanced monitoring for production it is better to be checked additional configuration yeah, here we need to select our parameter group that we created, 0 ETL. So we believe this DB parameter group as is, we only selected cluster parameter group that we have created. Enable encryption, we can leave those options as is. Maintenance, we don't need to delete production. Let's create database. It may take a couple of minutes. In the meantime, let's go to Redshift and create Redshift environment. Amazon Redshift. We'll use a serverless option. Uh, yeah, there is another limitation here. When we are working, Zero ET integration with uh, Aurora Postgres SQL, you need to do it in the preview you work group. So we'll create the work group name as uh, zero ETL hyphen redshift WG. We'll leave these options default, we'll leave the subnets and everything default as is. Creating a new namespace zero ETL hyphen redshift, default database name day. Admin username admin, adding the admin password. Associate and role. Next. Next. Okay. So it is creating a zero ETL RS namespace and a work group. It may take a few minutes time. Okay. Redshift namespace is available, work group is available. Let's see if we are able to connect to Redshift query data. 
in the Redshift query editor. Yeah, this is the serverless Zero ETL Redshift worker group. Okay, so here is the Dave database public schema. There's nothing within this Dave database. Good, we are able to connect. So now what we have to do? Let's go back and check if uh, uh, another Postgres SQL is ready. Okay, yeah. So you see that uh, the cluster and instances both are in available status now. No, that is good. Uh, so what we do, we'll first finish the configuration of uh, Redshift. So here there are a couple of things uh, that we need to configure. First, Redshift is not case sense to, whereas Postgres is case sense to. So here we need to update Redshift parameter to be case sense to. Okay, how can we do that? Because it's a serverless, we can do it through Cloud Shell. Okay, so I have the command. So, okay, it's already in the files. Now I need to turn into true. Okay. So we made uh, Redshift also case in stew. So that part is done. So now what we have to do, we need to get into namespace, resource policy. We need to give access to Redshift. First, we have to configure authorized principal and then authorized integration sources. Like know who is the person, particular account or the particular role, who is authorized to access Redshift and what is the integration source for the Redshift. First, add authorized principal. You can enter principal ARN or account ID. Okay, let me copy this account ID. Okay, I have added a principal. Now I need to add authorized integration source. So here, what is the integration source? It is the Aurora Postgres, right? So let's go to Aurora Postgres configuration. Okay, here is the ARN. Okay, save changes. So we also successfully added the integration source. Let's test the connection to Aurora Postgres SQL. We'll take this cluster endpoint. We'll go to PG admin. Okay. We'll just call it. Connection, connection, you are password. Okay, we are able to successfully connect to Aurora Postgres SQL. And what databases we have? We have this uh, default Postgres database. Okay, it's good. So now what we will do, create one database so that we can use it for the zero ETL integration testing. Call this database as loan servicing DB. Okay, so we have created this database. Let's refresh. Okay, we can see that. Okay, we are good. So now get back to Aurora Postgres SQL and do the third step. What is the third step? Zero ETL integration. So we prepare the source database, we prepare the target uh, data warehouse, Redshift. Now we are in the step of creating zero ETL integration. Let's create zero ETL integration. We give an integration name, zero ETL, Postgres and Redshift. So what is the, okay, so this is the database, loan servicing. And then what is the name database that we have created? Loan servicing DB. Next, yes, we use the current account and let's, okay, this is the Redshift. Okay, click next. Encryption, okay, next. Okay, so review and create. So this is the source database, loan servicing, and name database, loan servicing DB, target, current account, zero ETL, Redshift, warehouse, let's create zero ETL integration. Okay, as it stated here, this integration may take up to 30 minutes. So now this integration is in active status. So we're done with the step three. Now let's test it out, whether really this zero ETL integration works. I need to actually create a database in the data warehouse for me to sync from the source to the target. Here we need to use the integration ID. Where do we find the integration ID? You can get the integration ID from here. You see here, so this is the integration ID. We use this integration ID when creating database on the warehouse. Okay. So I'm creating loan servicing database using this integration ID. from name database loan servicing db 
Okay, the database has been created. Let's refresh it. Oh, here you go, Loan Servicing DB. So now the database is available in the Redshift. So there, is, there are no tables created. Uh, so now let's go to Source DB. Let's create a couple of tables. Do we have any tables, existing tables? There are no tables. I'm creating a borrower table. Create it. Let me insert data into this table. Insert another row. Okay, I have inserted two rows into borrowers table. If the integration is set up properly, we should see this borrower table along with two rows that we inserted on the Redshift side. Okay, so we are here. There you go. So there is like when you see the borrower table, let's change. Let's create another one. Once everything select star from borrowers. Boom, there you go. So you see the both rows got inserted in the source. Now you immediately see them on the red sheet. Let's go back to source database, create another table. So we'll create a loans table. Okay, now I'll insert two rows. Okay, can we see them on Redshift? Let's go find out. Oh, there you see the second table, loans. Let's start loans. Okay, so here is this. Okay, is it all, is this supports only the new table creation and data insert what happens if there's any update data updates on the source side let's try that out what i'm going to do i'm going to update a loan balance of a particular loan okay so it's earlier it's uh, is 150000 updated to 145000 let's check it out okay so here you see this is the whole one right so what is the balance 150000 but this nine zero. You see one forty thousand. That means all the all the DML also supported between source and target with the help of zero ETL integration. Does zero ETL integration supports all Postgres SQL features? Except few, pretty much yes. So here are a few limitations. It won't support custom data types or data types created by Postgres extensions. Renaming of schemas or databases within a source DB cluster. Large field values that require the overhead sized attribute storage technique, post technique. Th these are uh, limitations. And there are some general limitations. We can't modify an integration after you create it. If you need to change certain settings, you must delete integration and recreate the integration. Similarly, you can't rename or delete the DB cluster if there is any integration associated to it. So what do we have to do here? You need to delete the integration first and then you are allowed to rename or delete the DB cluster. These are the very few limitations uh, compared to plenty beneficial features. Conclusion, once we set up zero ETL integration, you see the data is flowing from source to target in near real time. It is supporting all types of DDL, DML changes on source sync with the data warehouse. So now organizations can save time and cost associated with conventional ETL pipelines. So they better spend resources elsewhere there is a value addition. Thank you for watching the video.